first thing to know about isotopic analysis is that the tissues that you look at are going to be destroyed. Okay. Um, so traditionally what happens is, um, let's say I get a full case that comes into the lab and um, I do a biological profile on that person. It's a skeletized, skeletonized case. Um, and then what I would say is I'd call the investigator and I'd say, okay, this is my report. And I'd say, you know, I have the capability of doing isotopic analysis to confirm or disconfirm that the person is consistent with the area where they were found. So that would be the, are they a resident mm -hmm. uh, of this place? Are they born here? Um, do the isotopes support that? Or um, maybe were they born someplace else? Were they a short-term resident of this location? Yes or no? And so depending on the tissues that we have available, we can answer those questions relatively, right? Mm -hmm. Because if we have long hair to deal with, then we're talking about months, right? Mm -hmm. But if we have no hair, then we're really talking about um, thinking about a five-year period, like looking mm -hmm. at a rib, right? So what will happen is we'll take a tooth. Um, if one is available, we prefer the first permanent molar. Um, we'll take a piece of the rib, um, and we may take a piece of the femur. Um, these, for the tooth, we separate enamel from dentine. If you want to do time sequence analysis, meaning you want to actually look at different layers of a bone or a tooth, you can do that. So you can go in and you can say, okay, this layer that I'm testing right now um, represents this age period. And this layer that I'm testing right now represents this age period and therefore this time period, right? Or you can take a homogenized sample, so maybe you get all the enamel that you can collect and you homogenize it, and then that represents this homogenized birthplace sample. Okay, so you can do that. You can do either of those types of analysis for any of those tissues. Um, and then you can test them for strontium, which is a geologically specific isotope, strontium-8786. You can look at oxygen. Um, which is also geologically specific, and hydrogen. And so oxygen is going to come from drinking water, mainly. Strontium is going to come from food, if we're looking at that kind of strontium. If we're looking at strontium in the hair from washing or from hand washing, that's the local environment strontium coming through the, the tap water. Um, and then we can kind of put the story together. Oxygen, excuse me, carbon and nitrogen isotopes tell us something about diet. And that's proven to be really helpful in scenarios of, for example, um, the Korean War. So if you had a commingled grave and you were looking for Americans and all you had was fragments, you can go in and you can analyze dietary differences and you can clearly find Americans which have a diet focused on corn versus um, individuals from Asia which have a diet focused on rice. And so you can use that dietary separation to kind of put individuals in one camp or another. So depending on the story that you want to tell, right, and the question that you want to ask, you can incorporate more or less isotopes and more or less tissues and get an idea about birthplace, get an idea about location for the past five years, get an idea about location for the past 20 years, or maybe if we're talking about fingernails or hair, get an idea of location for the past months. And so, you know, you have to make decisions. Yeah. And um, you can do about um, three tissue samples. So let's say um, a tooth, a rib portion, and a femur portion for under $500 for all of those isotopes, carbon, yeah. oxygen, strontium, um, all of those isotopes that you're interested in. So it's fairly inexpensive, yeah. and um, there are several labs around the country that can do this. They all charge different prices. Some of them are mm -hmm. private, so they'll be more expensive. Mm 